Do you know the 10 essential art supplies you should have within your art collection? No guesses? Not to worry. My name is Brittany and I'm a Houston artist here to help you with all of your artistic needs. I'm here to go over the 10 essential art supplies that you should have within your collection, whether you're a beginner artist or you're an expert artist. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell so you're notified of all of my upcoming videos. So grab your beverage and let's get started with figuring out those best supplies. The first supply I'm adding to the list is a handy dandy sketchbook. If you've never had a sketchbook before, this will absolutely change your life because it will help you jot down all of the ideas that you have swimming in your brain. Not to mention, what is a sketchbook without pencils or even pens? Faber-Castell is the brand of choice that I have. Um, they've never done me wrong. I've never really branched out that much when it comes to other brands, but this is the brand that I like. Oh, also don't forget your eraser. That will come in handy in case you make any mistakes while you're sketching. And trust me, there will be mistakes. That's the fun part of art. Next supply I would highly recommend would be Creative Colors Hard Pastels. I'm recommending pastels because with these you can use them for drawing. You can even use um, acrylic mediums to turn these into paints. And also you can even use something as simple as water as well with these. If you would like to use the water method, don't forget your handy dandy jar. You can use any jar that you have laying around from some of your pasta sauce if you made pasta one night and used all of the sauce. The next few items on my list will be a paintbrush set and a painter's palette. This is the set that I have because I really like flat brushes. However, I would highly recommend getting a set that has a variation. And then um, you can also choose whatever painter's palette that you would like. I like these because I can just tear one off, chunk it in the trash, but you can get the traditional plastic ones or even wood. Next few things are very simple. It's gonna be scissors and a ruler. Hopefully I wouldn't have to explain what those two things would be for or other words be used for, but just in case you're gonna cut things if you want to, and then you can use the ruler as a straight edge. Next thing, I'm going to show you that water method that I was mentioning earlier with these set pastels. I had some difficulties, of course, as you can see, choosing some colors, but whatever. I finally made a decision on them. I'm using stoplight colors. Big whoop, big surprise. <laughs> Don't know why I was gravitated to that, but it'll get the job done with this demo that I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to quickly scribble some color down just jot it down it doesn't have to be perfect i'm just jotting it down i would say with this method if you you're going to be using like water though like to almost like a watercolor probably not draw so hard on the paper as i am because i just noticed it was a little bit different when it comes to the blending process with these you can use them thicker as you can see on the left or you can use like the, the skinnier version on the other end and make lines. So that's really why I recommended this supply because it has so much versatility. If you're just starting out, I, I know when I was just starting out, I wanted to have more products that had more versatility, which makes you feel that you're getting a more bang for your buck in other words. But mm, that's just, that's just my thought process on it. If you have a different way of thinking about it or if you've used other supplies comment below and let me know the ones that work for you as far as versatility after you of course added your color down you're just going to get your jar have the water in it and then use your paintbrush and spread the color so like I was saying I probably went a little bit hard when it comes to how I was putting down the applications of color um, that's just me to a T to be honest, but as you can see, they work really well when it comes to adding water. I really like to use these the most, like when I'm sketching in my sketchbook or if I'm just doing like a quick little color study. So that's pretty much why I like these because it's just so versatile. I don't have to carry a lot, especially if I'm out and 
as I'm doing now, you can use your fingers to even blend it in a little bit more. And then you can go over the applications once this water has dry, like dried. So you can use broken colors. Um, you can use graphite like I'm using now. That's why I recommended the pencils in the beginning. It's just so many versatility options that you have with the supplies that I have given you on my list. I don't like carrying a lot of things. I don't like just pointless supplies in my studio to be honest if you know i'm being completely transparent with you but that's why i chose these but i've had those hard pastels for a long time within my studio but i absolutely love using them love 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 using them another method you can use is um this is a bonus supply but turpentine that is the mona lisa turpentine that i use i'm pretty sure i've shown it before I haven't done any oil painting videos, but it works just as well with using these pastels if you need to spread it out. But the water method works the same way, to be honest. Um, they come out a little bit darker, as you can see in this sample, but it's really not really a big difference with if you're using the turpentine or if you're using the water. If I were you, I would really just opt with using the water unless you're using more so like oil pastels. The oil pastels, you would really wanna use the turpentine and not the water since the oil and water don't mix. Since I showed you how to use the water with the hard pastels, I'm going to show you how to just layer on some ink on top of those hard pastels. The set I recommended have different size pens within it. So you can have like really thin strokes. You can have really thick strokes. It's just one of the ones that I really love if you're doing any sort of cross hatching. So that's another technique that you can use with the hard pastels. This is a bonus supply. So I am adding acrylic paint as a bonus because you, there's so many things you can do with acrylic paint. I'm just gonna add a thin layer of color first, and then I'm gonna show you how you can use the hard pastels when you're painting, sorry, not really painting, but drawing over the acrylic paint. Once your acrylic paint has completely dried to the touch and it doesn't feel damp in any way, you can use those same hard pastels to swipe over the acrylic and make a broken color effect. See how a little bit of that blue is showing through the green and how some of the blue is showing through the yellow as well? That is what I mean by broken color. So the first thing that came to mind with using this technique is if you wanted to do like a quick apple study, it would be really nice to have like a deep red and then have some of this color showing through on. And there you have it. Those are my 10 essential art supplies that I think that you should have within your studio or collection. Let me know if you have any other supplies that I didn't add on this list that you think should have been on. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time during the next video that I have for you. Bye.